Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for everything you have revealed, exposed to your children. We're asking, Lord, that your word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Your goodness, your graciousness, your mercy, your salvation will be evident in our lives in Jesus' name. Everywhere we go, in our family, in our places of work, on the street, in the vehicle, in the community, everywhere, people will take note that a gracious work has been done in our hearts. And all the deficiencies and defilements of the past, by the blood of the Lamb, cleanse everything away in Jesus' name. With a heart purified, sanctified, circumcised, sincere, honest, holy, and righteous, Lord, we pray we will be obedient to everything you have taught and all you expect of us in Jesus' name. Public, private, open, secret, our lives will reflect the very heart and the nature and the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Always been with us. Every battle you've already won, we've already won. Show me one thing you can't do. Show me a mountain you can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough and then thing is possible. It's possible. There's a kingdom, and there is a kingdom that's advancing at the speed of light, and in his kingdom, every dead thing is bound to rise. Oh God, our Redeemer. Faithful to revive, oh, we will revive. Yeah, show me one thing he can't do, show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show And anything is possible, it's possible. Yeah. Now all of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. He will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise Shake off despair as I sing out your name A victory dance I will dance out in faith He will crush disappointment and break every chain Show me one thing he can do Show me a mountain he can move He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can't part. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. Is possible. Oh, we know this that anything 
Nothing is possible with Jesus. Oh, and anything is possible. Here I am to worship, here I am. 
is my firm foundation He's the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. Oh, he won't. No, he won't. I've still got joy. And I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I put my hope in Jesus And he's never let me down He's faithful through every season So why would he fail?
you, Jesus, that you never fail us, Lord. Thank you that you always come through, even if it's the midnight hour, the last moment you come through, Lord. We bless your name. We're expecting great things in Jesus' name. Yeah, let's just appreciate God for that wonderful ministration that telling us that Jesus won't fail. So the hour has come for our Father in the Lord, our GS, to give us the word, the bread of life, to tell us, to show us that Jesus that never fears. So I have the pleasure to invite our Father to come and give us that word of life. That the Lord had given unto you in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading there from verse 19. Luke chapter 10. Verse 19, and it says, I give unto you, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Somebody shout, Amen. When you have something like oppression, attack, affliction, something is walking at my back, something is walking in my tight, something is moving in my stomach. What did you do about it? I run to the prayer warriors. And I said, I need this, I need this. And they pray and pray and pray. And then you go back. And uh, you know that thing, he knows you are not choosing the power that the Lord has given you. And then you run there again, you will not run again. I will not run again. Uh -uh. Little headache, pray now. Little stomach problem, pray now. Uh, there's something that is pulling my, uh, pulling my nerve and my muscle there. Pray, you will overcome. I will overcome. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over and over all the power of the enemy. And the wisdom. Let's pray for Over that all God the power them. of God the enemy. Pastor, I read a lot, but the enemies will not allow me to retain what I read. They didn't read this one. Pastor, I make effort. I try, 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 but I come back to square one. No progress in my life. Enemies will not allow me. Uh -uh. You are the one magnifying those enemies. Those enemies of your life, they are nothing. They will come to nothing. He says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, if in your life you take this verse, you read it, read it, read it. Behold, I give unto you power. To tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You go, you go, and then you come back home. And before you do anything, if you're taking a glass of water, you open it, get behold, I give unto your power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means. So to, you're going to sleep Pray at night, you do your normal quiet time, and you read Pray everything you want to read, Jesus and then before you fall asleep, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means so to, you wake up in the morning, you do your devotion, family devotion, and all that, but before you go out, you come back to behold, I give 
give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means so to you. You're traveling to the village after you've made all your preparations and you packed all your load and then you have prayed and you have said all the, the grace and then you open to this again I'm going to the village. Behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. When you read and read and read it becomes part of your life. It will mix with your blood. It will get into your brain. It will be in your faith. It will, as you are taking the word, every step, because I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy from now till you see Jesus face to face, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Who am I speaking to them? Where are you? Today it will start. Rise up and tell the Lord. I say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. I have the victory. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Open your mouth and say, Lord, here I am. Everything he has said. The authority of Christ that is always able. Open your mouth You're not praying. Pray unto God. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Prevailing authority of the Almighty Sovereign. Receive Him as your personal Savior. Know him as the ever present Savior. Recognize his presence in your life. His word of promise in your life. And you know, all authority belongs to him in heaven and in earth. And it's in that authority you want God to you're do moving you. forward, Go before the going Lord and tell wherever God. you are going, Present your request doing whatever God. you are doing. Get, receive it. Remember, feel that authority. The day Sense of that authority. The day of glory. Acknowledge the that day of authority. The day of Believe mercy. that Ask authority. Confess that authority, the authority of Christ. Ask for good and he health. says, We he shall be taught you want God all to heal things. You? Are you asking? Whatsoever he, asking. he has commanded. He your prayer. And Tell that God we should you. observe. The touch of God is marvelous. Have you got anything the in the message you're going to mighty. observe? The touch of God is powerful. Tell anything God, in oh his God, word you're going to observe. Touch me. When God touches you, your mountain will become plain. Anything Call according to his calling, you are going to prayer, observe. The hour of blessings. Teaching the them hour to of miracles. The Tell hour the of the spectacular. All that have Call heard. upon God, you will receive. What do you want observe. God to change in your life? What do you I want God obey. to change in your life? It's and a then great you changer. live a victorious Tell him to change life. Your sorrow to joy. Observe. Tell him to change obey. your sickness. To Keep healing and health. Do. Tell him to change your poverty. Give your life, your surrender your life Tell him unto to the Lord. Your failure, to and say, Lord, Are you really praying? here am I. Yes, keep on praying. Your authority, Pray your control your is upon Pray for my yourself. life. Pray for your family. Let this prayer bring blessings. Teaching them to bring observe. Miracles. Bring signs All and things. wonders into your life. Whatsoever today, the last day of the crusade, I've commanded what will you show you. when you get home. That is what you call last minute blessings, last minute miracles. You can get it, you will get it. Tell God all deadness in your life, reviver and renewer. Whatever is dead in your life, 
God will revive. God will renew. God will revive. God can change your pain to gain. Told us to repent. If you call upon the Have name of God, that? don't Have you come back home empty-handed. It will change your loss. No recovery. He told us to make restitution. For so many years. Have you observed you that? Grace, it can Are you just piling up guilt and condemnation? You have lost mercy. It can no be restitution. If only you pray. You can't if only say you sorry. Because the Bible says, he that to the people decision, you have offended. Upon God, your limitation you have not restored the, the money your that you stole. You have been limited before. And you so, cannot rectify no that thing no in your life. that is crooked no in your point. life. Are you now, really observe Open to do. Jesus is here. What he has commanded. He's beside us. He's with you Make here. the right, the wrong things right in you your solve life. Your problem. Abandon, you break your yoke. forsake you your mountain, every sin, every transgression. Call upon God. Observe Pray unto God. to do. Tell God. Jesus, reign in my life. Reign in my life. Any man be in Christ. In my it's family. a new creature. Reign it's a new ministry. creation. Are you praying? Old Keep on things praying. are passed Don't away. Be tired. And behold, be all things have become new. Last minute blessings. New life. Tell God, hear my new language. Don't bypass me. Have new mercy devotion. upon me. Have mercy upon me. New Don't lifestyle. Let me go empty and dead. Whatever Observe you didn't get the first do. day, second day, third day, fourth day, and yes, the day, ability today you are going to get is the always if you pray unto God. Able today, savior. you are going to receive the blessing, and you are going back always with hallelujah chorus. You are going savior. back with testimony. It's able going to make you overcome temptation. Call upon God. It's hearing. It's acting unto us. Is able to make you overcome every trial. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. It's able to make you overcome the peculiar trait of anger Our in your Martin life. Nebu, we thank you for what you have been doing. That boisterous temper, angry temper. Violent temper, able visitation. to make you overcome. For divine mercy, Lord, as you have come able. to the final day able. of this crusade, according Lord, to I the power that walketh in Touch us, our life. break our yoke, move our mountain. Let that us lifestyle the testimonies in Jesus' of the name. snake in the green As grass. Continue, sneaking, continue with us. Sneaking. Jesus, doing evil name, and hiding it. We have prayed. It's able to make you overcome Amen. that kind of nature that will become Amen. sincere, Praise transparent, the Lord. holy. Praise the Lord. And you're not just behaving hypocritically like the final green night. snake. I can hear you. Final night. Final the night. Green Jesus, grass. the miracle worker, is here right now to release and the download of the Able. miracles upon your life tonight. Amen. Able to say. Amen. Amen. Able. Able to Able sanctify. As we worship. Able. Jesus. Able to empower. In the Holy Ghost, able, able to heal, able, able to deliver, able, able to make you free from anxiety, worry, fretting, able, able to deliver you from the fear of man. And your life is visible here and there because of the people you fear. For Christ is able, able to make you stable, sanctified, steady, solid, real, sanctified, steadfast character, able.
able to embolden you. you. That you live a confident life. Not self confident, savior confident, spiritual confidence. Able. Able to make you tread of serpents as scorpions. Able. Able to make you overcome all the power of every enemy. He's able. He has the potential ability. Always able. Always able. Always able to overcome. And every challenge you face in life. And it gives us permanent authorization. For a session to use his name. And he says, Whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father will be glorified in the Son. Authorization. Be the believers on me. The works I do, he shall do also. Because he's going to the Father. Authorization to walk in his steps. Authorization to live like he lives. Authorization to preach the gospel to every creature. To be doing every day, every time what he, Christ, would have been doing if we were here on the earth today. Authorization to go and you preach the gospel to every creature. Authorization to stand on the promises. Authorization to go forth. And be productive in his name. As you have not read the books, people are lovingly giving to you. Have you made use of the authorization? Christ has given you to live and overcome in life, to be free from every yoke and bondage of the devil. Are you living up to the privilege you're having Christ? Fearlessly, faithfully, wholeheartedly, believingly, explicitly, living up to the privilege you have in Christ. Not dribbled here and there. 
by situations and circumstances. Everybody wants to tell you go. God has answered your prayer. He knew authority in your life. He knew power in your life. A new possibility in your life in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand, Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because of what you have promised. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray for those who have asked for salvation, for forgiveness, for freedom, for power over every temptation. Do as they have asked you in Jesus' name. Bring assurance of salvation to them. Let the Spirit of God witness in their heart, their sins are forgiven. Salvation has come to settle in their heart. And I pray, Lord, for those who have asked you for sanctification, purity of heart, holiness of heart, sincerity in their heart, no form of hypocrisy or make believe. Lord, I pray that transparent sanctified life, purified life, holy life, grant to them in Jesus' name. Lord, it will not just be sanctification in doctrine. It will be sanctification in demonstration. Confirm each and every life in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have asked for the power of the Holy Ghost to set the promises unto you and to children and to many that are far off, as many as the Lord and God shall call. I pray that our lives will not be powerless. Power, in feeling, baptism of the Holy Ghost, grant to the sanctified vessels in Jesus' name. Lord, everything was hurt to be in your world. We're going forth to observe, to be, and to do in Jesus' name. And this special privilege you have given us, that behold and give unto you power. Power. Power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Physical. Supernatural coming from darkness, we tread on everyone, everything in Jesus' name and power over all the power of the enemies. Lord, we say amen. We accept it, we believe it, we confess it. From this day, no enemy will stand against our progress and succeed. We have the power over all those enemies on land, from the sea, from the sky, from the bush. We have the power over all the power of all enemies in Jesus' name. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. The concoction of the wicked will not kill you. The manipulation of the wicked will not cut your life short. And the things that are coming from the paths of darkness will not hurt or hinder your progress in Jesus' name. 
nothing below. Nothing around. Nothing in the sky. Nothing from the dark. Nothing from the pretenders. Will hurt your life in Jesus' name. You will not die another person's death. The road will be clear for you every time you travel. Protection upon your life. Preservation upon your life. Long life you will have. And when we come back again to this Alpha location for another GCK, you will still be alive. Lord, confirm your power, your promise, confirm all possibilities on every life right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. You've got it. Take your blessing and go home rejoicing, excited, and keeping everything that you have got to be. Nobody will take the minutest part of your blessing away from you in Jesus' name. Thank you and God bless you. Dr. W.F. Kumuyi. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. And the pastor has said, there is a miracle with your name attached unto it. Salvation for you. Healing for you. Deliverance for you. It will not fail in your life in Jesus' name. It's your life. It's your redeemer. It's your power, it's everything, in everything. It will do great in your life tonight, in Jesus' name. Once again, I welcome you to the crusade, GCK. Jesus, the miracle worker. Shout it with me. What are you seeing that word, miracle? is the mercy of God, the miracle of mercy. Salvation comes by mercy. Healing comes with his mercy. And deliverance with his mercy. I is that impartial intercessor. It's in heaven right now. And he's praying for you. Making intercession for Every individual are the serene redeemer. He reigns in our lives. He reigns in our hearts. He reigns in our home. When we allow him, he reigns over every circumstance in your life. And I know already your life is turning around for the better. He is the one that has that authority. He is always able. And because of that authority and ability, he comes into our lives and he does the incredible. Tonight, incredible, impossible things are going to be possible in your life in Jesus' name. I come now to the letter. That's the letter. Tell me. I said that the letter C and it is Jesus, the compassionate Christ with complete kill. By your head we we'll pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that today your compassion, your kill, your power will be manifested on everyone in Jesus' name. 
that Lord, you will do the great thing, the gracious thing, the mighty thing, and bring you to every part of every life tonight in Jesus' name. Effect it and perform it in every life. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. God has blessed you already. Sit down in the blessing of the Lord. Jesus, the compassionate Christ with complete kill. We're looking at Luke chapter 7 and we're looking at verse 20. In Luke chapter 7, verse 20, when the men were come unto him, they said, John, Baptist John the baptizer John the baptizer has sent us unto thee saying I doubt he that shall come come to save come to heal come to deliver come to set free come to bring the glory of heaven to the earth are you the one that shall come or do we look for another? Look at verse 21. In verse 21, and in that same hour, like in this same hour, today, your miracle will reach you there. Your conversion will reach you there. Your salvation, forgiveness, freedom, and total transformation will reach you there in Jesus' name. In that in same name, hour, he killed, he killed, he killed many of their infirmities and plagues and of free. evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave us sight. Lord. And you know, it's still the same Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did at that time is going to do at this very hour. It will open your blind eyes. It will loose your dumb tongues. It will open your, your deaf ears in Jesus' name. You are paralyzed. You rise up and walk tonight. And you have that bad pain that will not allow you to bend or to stand or to move in any way today. Your miracle, your cure is coming in Jesus' name. He cured many of their infirmities and their plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many he gave their sight. Verse 22, he tells us, Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John and tell everyone, you tell your neighbor, you tell your friend, and you tell everyone around you online. Tell the people that you have that contact with. Tell them how the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed. The dead here, the dead that are raised and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Verse 23, it says, and blessed is he, and blessed is she, and blessed is the man in any generation, in every generation. Blessed is that one whosoever shall not be offended in me. The kill that he brings, the complete cure that he brings, he kills the head, he kills the mind, he kills the soul, he heals the spirit, he heals the body, he heals the mind, he heals the personality, he heals every part of our soul, spirit and body, is healing, is deliverance, is for everyone is coming there to you today look at his completeness Colossians chapter 2 and I'm reading here in verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you you know some men can spoil you with their jesting 
with their reading book, with their misinterpretation of the Bible, with their misrepresentation of the complete Christ. They can spoil you, they can derail you, and they can defile you, defile your mind, and defile your spirit because of their ideology and philosophy. And they begin to argue, don't listen to the argument, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and being deceived after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ look at verse 9 in verse 9 for in him when you come into him in him when you see what's available through him in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily then in verse 10 in verse 10 and ye are complete Tonight, you are complete. If the blindness makes you incomplete, it will open those eyes, and tonight, you are complete. If the suffering, the sickness, makes your happiness incomplete tonight, it will take the suffering and the sickness away, and tonight, you are complete. If all the deformity, you know, you can't use your leg, the legs are there, you can't use them, the arms are there, you can't use them, the tongue is there, you can't use it, the eyes are there, you can't use it, and the mind, the heart is there, and because of the heart problem, you can't, your heart is not functioning well, that's incompleteness, but tonight, I am complete. Tonight I am complete. If you are impotent, that means you are not complete. But now, power coming from on high, power coming upon your life. That incompleteness in your life will be taken away. Tonight ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. That's what we bring today. Jesus, the compassionate Christ, will complete kill. One, two, three. I'm looking at three things today, and you will get there. Tonight is the night of your kill. Give me a good amen. Tonight is the night of your conversion. Give me a good amen. And everything, listen, everything that is lacking in your life amen. will be supplied tonight in Jesus' name. Three things. Number one, repentance that leads to the confession of Christ. Repentance that leads to the confession of Christ. Number two, reliance, relying on him, resting on him, leaning on him, being supported by him in your soul, in your spirit, in your heart. Reliance that leads for conversion on Christ, for salvation on Christ, for reformation in Christ, for regeneration in Christ. Reliance, that's faith. When you rely on someone, you believe him. You rest on him. You lean on him. You take him for your support. That faith, that belief, that reliance on him brings conversion, total conversion in every area of your life. Number two, reliance that leads for conversion on Christ. Number three, reassurance. Assurance is coming to you. I said assurance is coming to you. Reassurance that looks up to the compassion of Christ. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at repentance that leads to confession, the confession of Christ. Look at Proverbs chapter 28. 
reading from verse 13 he that covereth the seeds shall not prosper but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy I need an amen there he that covereth the seeds shall not prosper that's the word of god there are people how do they cover their sins they say see me look at my hand this is how my heart is i don't do any evil i don't hate anybody i don't say the person that has breakfast should not eat it look this is how my heart is and they cover their sin the people that said, I've never done anything wrong. Have you caught me ever doing anything wrong? They cover their sin. The people that tell a lie, and before you know it, they cover it with a bigger lie, a wider lie. The people that go to do evil Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then on Sunday, they come to church like angels of God. And when you mention the name of Jesus, they kneel down. You mention the name of Jesus, they bow down. They are gentle in church, the lions outside, in their heart, in their plan, in their action, in their evil deeds. Nobody as terrible as they are in the society. But they say, what have I done? What do I do? But I saw you slapping that man. Ah, uh, you don't understand. I was defending myself. I was protecting myself. You go to take charge to hurt other people. You don't understand. I was only protecting myself. Only defending myself. The color, what they do? And they put a good color on their bad life. And they are covering their sin. And God knows everything. Adam, where are you? I heard your voice in the garden. And I had to hide myself. What? What have you done? It's not me. Ask my wife. Ask if it's other people that do it. And then I come into the picture. They cover their sin. He stole that thing. And he went to his uh, apartment. Dug the earth. Buried that thing there. And covered it up. They cover their sin. And when they say, when God said, there is evil in the camp. And because of that, I will not go with you anymore it can did not come out it was undercover and they began to bring all the tribes of Israel he was undercover he didn't believe in God he didn't believe that the God who knows everything knows every secret will get to him and point him out thou art the man thou art the woman they cover their sin do you cover your sin? Are you putting on a smile as if you are a nice, nice fellow, a gentle fellow, after you have done that evil? Then you cover it up and you look like a nice, gentle man, a nice lady. Now, such people, God will bring judgment upon them. Because they are accusing God of being blind. God will bring judgment upon them because they are taking the knowledgeable God as a God that does not know them or see them. They make God 
abide God that cannot see. He that covereth the sin shall not prosper. But the person that says is a lost game. I can't do it. I can't cover up. I have to open up. He knows everything. Everything done in secret. He knows everything done behind the door. He knows everything done without the view and the sight of men. He knows all the receipts will change. All the money will steal from the office. All the lies we tell in the market, and we say, you know, I'm just sending to you. I'm just selling to you. I make no gain. You know, it's a lie. We know it's a lie. All those things, if you open up, but who so confesses and forsaken? You see that it's not only to confess. There are people they come, Lord, I confess, I'm a sinner. But you said that yesterday. Today, but you said that last Sunday, but you said that last time, it's not too late to confess, it is that you forsake whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy tonight. Mercy is waiting for you. Let me hear your amen. When you confess and when you forsake, you forsake. Now, if you stole my shirt, you sinned. And then you win that shirt. And I was looking at you and I was saying, that's my shirt. Look at this man. He stole my shirt. And eventually, you come to crusade. And you say, Lord, I may see. I know. I cannot hide it from you. You know me through and through. And uh, so, you confess to God. But you didn't forsake my shirt that you stole. You didn't bring it back to me. You kept on wearing the stolen shirt. And then you come to me and you say, can you have Jesus as your personal savior? I say, tell me the story. You know, I got Jesus as my savior. I am saved. I said, how are you saved? And you are wearing my shirt. And you say, I confess my sin to the Lord. They told us to raise up our hands. I raised up my hand. I am saved. And I want you also to be saved. I said, okay, before I listen to you, I want to ask you a question. This shirt you are wearing, do you know who it belongs to? You say, well, I think... Okay, are you the owner? Yes, I am the owner. And you see wearing the stolen shirt. I confess, you must forsake. Number one, you return the shirt to me with a humble heart. I was a thief. I have confessed unto the Lord. And I come to you. To confess to you Today and to return your soul in shed unto you. That this is what brings means. salvation. Not only in that, region, you forsake region, stealing. You don't steal from me anymore and you don't steal from others anymore. That is the word of God. Whatever name you call it, call it restoration. Okay? You are restoring what you have stolen. Call it restitution. Okay, you are restoring what you are stolen. And it's not only church, money, not only money, you might even steal a woman. And there you have, you are just adding women to women. And you're not even, you no know, dowry, nothing. I love you, I like you. And then you take them. And you bring them our home, center, whatever you have taken unlawfully. He that confesses and forsaken, so he sin 
shall have mercy. I pray the mercy of God will come to you tonight. Look at First John chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 9. First John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. The sin we confess is the sin he forgives. If the sin is the sin he cleanses, it takes away from our lives. Is the sin the sin that you conquer? Any unconfessed sin will not be conquered in your life. You have sinned, you cover it up. You are not confessing to God. You are not confessing to the person you have offended. You are covering, 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 giving excuses and lame excuses. All those sins you don't confess, you can never conquer. It's when you confess to God, he gives the forgiveness and he gives the power to live an overcoming life if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Today it will happen. To you it will happen. When you raise up your hand and you confess to God, I am a sinner. I don't want to be a sinner anymore. I want the Savior to come unto me and forgive me and cleanse me. Then he comes, he's a loving Savior. He forgives you. He sets you free. And because you confess, because you pursue, he makes you to conquer the sin you have confessed and forsaken. Any sin you don't confess, you don't forsake, you will never be able to conquer that sin. But the Lord has called us today, he will give you the conquering power conquering power. You will conquer. You will be cleansed. Everything you've done before, when you confess and forsake, you have the mercy of God in Jesus' name. I say Amen. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 9. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, but that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord. Now, we have confessed the sin, then we confess the Savior. We open our mouth and we say, it's my Savior. He is my Lord. If we, he says, if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You will be saved. What's the person saying, Amen? I said, Where are you? Salvation comes to you tonight. Conversion comes to you tonight. A new life comes to you tonight in Jesus' name. He says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that Jesus as your Lord, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In verse 10, verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We come to number two here. Number two is reliance that leans for conversion on Christ. We rely not on ourselves, we have realized we cannot save ourselves. We have realized we cannot turn over a new leaf as they say. We realize our resolution, 
our determination cannot set us free from sin. We tried it over and over. At the end of every year, we make resolution. And January, we go back to the same old sinful, defiling thing. Personal reliance on ourselves will never change our lives. But reliance on Christ. Christ as Savior. Christ as Lord. Christ as the one that changes a very nature. Reliance that leaves for conversion on Christ. And tonight, as we lean on Him, as you trust him, as you rely on him, there will be conversion, transformation in your life tonight. In Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven and when people read verses of scripture they pull that verse out of its context and the lord was talking to his disciples that let the net that let their jobs They've even gone out praying for the sick, healing the sick, but there was still this pride of the depraved man in their hearts. And now they are forgotten, they were following Christ. And they became so proud, wondering who will be the greatest, who will be the highest. Who will be the most respected? Who will be number one? They were now seeking position, recognition. And Jesus said unto them, disciples, unto them, the people that profess, we're going to heaven, we're children of God, except ye be converted and become as little children. And children don't know. I'm number one, I'm number ten, they don't know about that. They're simple hearted. They're humble. They're meek. They're lowly. They don't use their talent to fight for position. They don't use their achievement to fight for position. They don't use their opportunity to fight for position. That pride disqualifies you from being a follower of Jesus who said, I am meek and lowly. Take my yoke upon you and your soul will find rest. He wants us to be truly and thoroughly converted and to be conscious of that conversion all the time because except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven look at acts chapter 3 we're reading from verse 19 acts chapter 3 reading from verse 19 repent ye therefore and be converted you see that repentance is not in isolation repent ye therefore and be converted when we truly repent we turn away from our sin we turn away from the darkness in our lives we turn away from the hidden practices in our lives if you stay behind the cost the uh, the cutting my wife cannot see who i touch what i touch where i go and what i commit and i can be coming back from the office and branch over there 
and my wife will never tell who I am visiting. Now behind the curtain, you show you're still a sinner, you're still an adulterer, you're still a fornication. As long as wife will not see, as wife, as long as husband cannot see, you just go ahead. And I ask you, will you do that thing if your wife was by your side? Will you go to that place if your husband were by your side? Anything with you behind the curtain, behind the door, and within, because our neighbor will not see, because we think a friend cannot see. Our pastor can never see this one. He will never detect that that's where I'm going and that's what I've been doing. That thing shows that you have not really repented. When we repent, every day, in the daylight, in the night, everything shows that we've been converted. A change, a transformation has happened. It says, repent ye therefore and be comforted that your sins may be blotted out if we don't repent our sin will not be blotted out the sin will be following us like our shadow and until we get to the throne before the throne of judgment look at that shadow there it's still following it's the repentance that makes him to blot out all our sins when the times of repression renewal when the times of regeneration and the time of transformation shall come from the presence of the lord what the lord is saying is don't hide it's of no use don't do anything in secret that you don't want to see the light of day come to the lord present yourself before the lord and say lord this is my real self i've been a pretender i've been an actor i've been a hypocrite i've been a sinner all along but now i come i turn i repent and Greece now the hand of the Lord order. and the power if of the I Lord will work out that conversion. It says, and your sins shall be blotted sin. out. Oh, All the sins will commit small, great. All the sins will commit of little size, of big size. All the sins will commit any time every Likeness time occasionally or habitually goes on record in the book of records before the lord and it is when we truly repent and he knows our heart that we have repented that he will blot out all that he has written concerning us in our lifestyle God of sinning it will blot out everything it will not be remembered against Christ us anymore Jesus. and then we go out free and we do the will and the words of god tonight is your night tonight is my night wow okay repent ye there for now way. and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing she of renewal so the time of regeneration and the time Just of reformation shall come from single. the presence Ready of the mingle. Lord. In verse 26, yeah, verse 26, unto you first, God, no, having no. raised up his son, I mean, Jesus, sent him to bless you in no. turning no. I can't. away, I in turning no. away, no, every one of you from his iniquity christ came to save from sin he doesn't give us license to go on sinning he doesn't give us freedom to go on sinning he doesn't give us the go ahead to keep on sinning 
he came so that he will take us from sin and he will take sin from us and he will turn us away turn everyone away from his iniquity tonight is the night he will do it i said he will do it for who for who be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Number three is the assurance. The assurance that looks up to the compassion of Christ. Compassion of Christ. Compassion of Christ. What does Christ do? When he has compassion on us. Remember, Jesus is our healer. And when we're suffering, and we have pain, we can't concentrate on anything, we're ruling here and there, and he sees, and he sees you, and you look up to him and you say, Lord, I am suffering, his compassion will come to you, he will heal you. Compassionate healing today. Compassionate deliverance today and compassionate cure in your life today in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 13. Matthew chapter 14. We're reading from verse 13. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by sheep into a desert place apart and when the people heard thereof they followed him on foot out of cities the people heard of jesus they've been suffering they've been sick many of them paralyzed many of them blind Many of them have been deaf and dumb children. Many of them, some of them having issue of blood. Some of them having fibroid. Some of them having incurable diseases. And they heard, and from different cities, from different cities, they came unto him. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sin. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. Any time he sees a sick person, a sick family, a sick community, a sick people gather together on the crusade field online over the radio over the television he has seen you there paralyzed man he has seen you there the woman having stroke hand cannot be raised up and the foot cannot walk he has seen you there and the one that is suffering from demonic attack affliction oppression he has seen you there tonight he saw them and he was moved with compassion towards them and not not empty compassion active compassion and he healed their sin as he changed as he changed is there something he cannot do remember he has complete power he has complete authority he has complete ability as he healed their sick is healing our sick people here tonight in jesus name the mention of his name will bring the healing and the deliverance and it will set you free it will set me free he christ the healer will set me free i will not carry i will not take my sickness home today it will have compassion on me it'll have compassion on you see me and it will heal you tonight in jesus name 
Matthew chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 32. Matthew chapter 20. I will read from verse 32. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? You must answer the question. He says, Yes, I know you are there. Are you looking for healing or are you looking just to see my face? Are you looking for healing or you just you just want to say I was there. I attended that crusade and you know I heard all those